Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Layla and today we have a subscriber financial review, international edition. Someone has emailed me from the Netherlands, so we're gonna go through their situation. It's a little bit different because they don't have debt like what you've seen in these other videos, but they've asked a number of questions and of course I want to help them, but this may be helpful to somebody else watching who is weighing certain options in their life as well. Before we get into the email, first thing, if you want a video just like this, it will be anonymous, then feel free to email me. My email is in my description box. There's also a list of things that would be helpful for you to include in your email about your financial situation so I can help you better. Number two, if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I also offer that. You can visit my website and see the packages that I offer, but we take things a lot further. I'll come up with a custom debt plan for you. We will talk about budgeting and make a budget for you, help you to save whatever it is that you're working toward. We can work together on that. And then third and final thing is to please be nice in the comments because this is somebody who is probably going to watch this video and probably read the comments. So I always like for it to be helpful and friendly. So I will read this email to you. Uh, it is a little bit long. The other thing is I don't know if this is a man or a woman, to be honest. I, I, yeah, um, maybe as I read it again, I'll, it'll stand out to me. But their name, if that's even their name, <laughs> is like gender, gender neutral. And yeah, so I'm just going to say they, I guess. I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay, but here we go. I got inspired by the international video you made for a subscriber, so I decided to send in my information and questions. It should be easier for you to relate as things are pretty similar to the US here in the Netherlands, and my questions are just tactical, no special country situation you need to know about. Obviously, that's just the intro to their email, and I, I just wanted to call that out because uh, I, I'm going to put everything in this video into dollars, like in my spreadsheet, you'll see USD. But just know that this is actually in euros. Uh, however, at the time of them emailing me, they mentioned that one euro equals a dollar and nine cents USD. So it is basically a dollar to a dollar. And um, yeah, just, just keep that in mind, but it really doesn't make a huge difference with all of this. I'm 37, living alone in the Netherlands with a mortgage that I just started about a year ago. I'm currently not employed, but receiving state health benefits due to an accident. I'm hoping to be able to go back to work by the end of the year, but for now I'm looking for ways to improve my finances in a situation where I'm not able to increase my income for the upcoming period. All amounts are in euro, which as of today is at one euro equals a dollar and nine USD, so basically no conversion needed. Cost of living is generally similar to a big city in the US, I think. In short, I get $2,638 per month in benefits after tax. I used to earn upwards of $3,400 per month after tax, plus an extra $2,000 per year in holiday allowance, so you see my income has gone down quite a bit. This will keep going for the foreseeable future, at least one more year or until I return to work. I'm not allowed to make any extra money from part-time work slash side hustles while in this situation. If I do, the state will lower my benefit accordingly. This information right off the bat makes things a little bit trickier just because with many of these situations, there's a lot of unknowns, um, not just from the like information in the email, but because we don't know what things will look like for this person in a few months or even beyond that, like 10 months or so. Like, will they still be getting this benefit or will they be working full time and increasing their income? Um, so I'm basically just going to have to assume that they're going to be making this $2,638 of benefit money per month because they said for until they start working or one more year. Yeah, but we'll see. I also get 418 per month as a compensation for my mortgage costs from the state. Too difficult to explain how it works and it doesn't matter too much. This is expected to go down over time, so next year I might have have about 400 per month and so on. So we'll we'll say you have the 418 extra per month on top of your benefit pay. My expenses are in the attached spreadsheet, everything by category from the beginning of the year. However, August is not complete. I write down everything and have been doing so for 10 plus years. I love that. That's that's so cool that you've been tracking for 10 years. And that is perfect. Um, the system that you have going, the spreadsheet that this person sent me, I don't love it. To me, it's a little bit overwhelming, but if that works for you, then that's great. I think it is really, really important for you to be tracking 
but I don't know that this, uh, I'll put up a screenshot of what, what they sent me and you're not gonna really be able to read anything just because it's so much information. And for me, I like things to be a little bit more simple, a little bit more organized, and I can't, it doesn't really seem like you're budgeting. And I think you probably should start budgeting, like actually setting a, a plan for your money instead of only tracking your expenses. Tracking your expenses is great, but that can often lead to overspending or, um, yeah, it's just, it's just better to actually create a budget and try to stick to that. So that's one little piece of feedback before we get into it. With the spreadsheet that they gave me, I actually did go through and basically take an average of the last eight months that we, they presented for 2023 and put it into a, a simpler format and, and broke it down by category. So they did break theirs down by category, but there was like multiple things under one. So I added those up or like rounded them up, added them up and took an average for the last eight eight months. It's not going to be 100% accurate just because they, uh, when they sent me this, it was mid-August, I think, and um, not the whole month hadn't been complete. So some things may be missing. My existing savings and investments are also in the spreadsheet. I only invest in the market funds slash ETFs with the intention to hold long term. I used to add a couple of hundred euros to this every month, but haven't done this since my accident. I also have a retirement account that goes through one employer and that will grant me a monthly allowance when I retire. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to contribute much to it in my 15 year career due to different work conditions. So I'm only counting on a few hundred euros per month when I retire age 68 or later. I definitely need to figure out other investments myself. Honestly, I'm not gonna be able to help too much with that just because I am completely unfamiliar with investing in other countries. I'm pretty sure there is like a Roth IRA equivalent in the Netherlands, I would assume. I don't know, y'all gotta let me know. So I think that would definitely be a good place to start. And it sounds like you have like index funds and ETFs over there. Uh, but I don't know how it works as far as like what those funds are like in the US We have the S&P 500 and we have the total stock market. Those are where I prefer to put my money um, But definitely something simple like that where it has like a high rate of return over the last like the lifetime of the index fund and You probably can afford to put a little bit um, But yeah, let's keep going my mortgage is a 30-year mortgage at 3.85% interest fixed for the first 10 years. It's definitely not the lowest interest ever. During the pandemic, it went less than 2%, but I also don't expect it to go higher than 4 to 5%. I would like to start paying extra to it to make sure that if house prices go down, I don't get into a situation where I owe more to the bank than my house is worth. I took a mortgage for the entire cost of the house, not something I would recommend, but it made sense financially for me. I was living in a very high rent area, so I was not able to save for a down payment and was always a step behind house prices going up versus my income. I took the first chance to buy into the housing market, lowering my living expenses and paying towards an asset every month. I don't know how the housing market will end up playing out, especially in the Netherlands. Uh, so it's possibly a risk, but this honestly isn't something like if I was in this situation, I probably wouldn't throw too much money extra at my mortgage, especially at that interest rate. I mean, it isn't the best interest rate, but uh, much better than like 6%, which is like what we're seeing here in the US. But yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. I don't have any other debts or loans, amazing. I don't have family or obligations like that and don't plan to get married, have kids, etc. It's just me. Now for my questions, I'm basically in an okay situation being able to cover my spending with the benefits I currently get and pulling from sinking funds. I could also lower some of the expenses, but which? So I have some extra each month, but in the current situation, I'm not able to contribute to all my goals every month. So I need to prioritize. My goals would be make sure I have enough money in my sinking funds to cover those categories in the next year. See the spreadsheet for what I still need. So I will put up a screenshot of that. It's really not much more. I think they wanna hit those goals within the next few months. So we'll, we'll see what that would look like. Not spend any money from my six months of expenses emergency fund. That's my parachute and I want it untouched. They have like over 18,000 there, which is good. I think you would be okay to keep it at that. Like let's not focus on adding more to your emergency fund, at least not over the next year based off of everything else on this list. So I'm gonna say, yeah, that's a goal in and of itself, just not to touch that money, unless of course an emergency comes up. 
and then if you do have to touch it to get it back to 18k I suppose but we're just going to kind of ignore that one because I think your emergency fund is is good you know we just won't touch it save 15 to 20,000 for a car that I expect I will need to buy in the next two to four years not in a rush but my current car is already 14 years old that means every month for the next four years like if you wanted 20,000 in four years you would need to save 416 per we'll say 415 per month so we'll, we'll be sure to include that. Put some extra money towards my mortgage for the reason explained above. As of today, I owe $295,342. You can see the monthly payment in the spreadsheet. If I could put down an extra 10K at the end of 2024, I would probably feel more comfortable. With normal payments included, I would then have paid 10% of the house, which is a bit more comforting than nothing. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like with your, with your spending. But yeah, like I said, I, I don't think you really need to worry about that. I, I think you might be okay, and I know it's not the perfect situation, but with time you will pay it down, you know? Since you already have the house and you have your income coming in and then after, you know, after a year or so and you return to work, you're probably going to increase your income, you'll probably be in an okay situation even if the value of your house goes down. Like if I was in this position, I would probably lower this in priority as far as my goals go. Um, but yeah, let's see what's possible. Save and invest for long term in order to be able to count on some partial retirement when I'm older. Also hoping to save about $6,000 for some home renovations. I was hoping for the summer of 2024 but could wait longer. It would be nice for my place but would also bring up the home value. Okay, um, That's another one where yes, I would probably deprioritize that just because I don't know how worth it it would be. Depending on the renovations, it may help to increase the value of your home. but I think it would be important to ask yourself like why are you doing that are you planning to sell the house in the next couple of years is it really necessary for you to bring up the value of the house in the next couple of years if you plan on living there for some time then it's not something that i think is really worth it you can start saving a little bit for it but not something like where you should be dedicating hundreds to it for medium term hopefully by the end of the year i will be working again and hopefully earning a bit more if possible as of right now it's not clear if i will be able to due to the accident then i should be able to get to my normal of contributing every month towards all the goals what would you do in the next six to twelve months in this situation what to work on first any ideas on how to lower my expenses are also welcome I'm generally frugal, but spend money where it's about health, hobbies, and friends. So as I said, with this one, it's a little bit different because we don't need to look at the debt avalanche slash snowball tracker because they don't have any other debt outside of their mortgage, which is great. We are still going to look at a spreadsheet though because I put together, like I said, all of their expenses, basically an average of what they're spending in all of these categories. So let's go ahead and, and hop over to that. I'm actually just going to pop up the spending over here. There's kind of a lot to work with here, so let me let me explain the income portion first of all. So you'll see at the top that there this is their income that they told me and keep in mind this is supposed to be euros, but I just have this in USD just for my brain basically and for many people watching it probably makes more sense. But okay, income $2,638. This person is not currently working. This is the benefit they have because of their accident. Um, we're going to assume that this is what you're going to be making for the next year or so and your question was about the next six to 12 months anyway so uh, we're just going to assume you're gonna you're gonna stay at that. In their spreadsheet it looks like they are a month ahead which is good because before adding in this month ahead value they were basically going into the negative every month so at some point in in their journey they were able to catch up get a month ahead that is amazing that is perfect because that allows you a lot more flexibility with what you do with with your income. So this is what they said they have in their checking account and that's what they use to pay for the following month and I'm going to assume if you have that for right now then you have that every single month. So that was $1,995. They mentioned that they get a compensation for their mortgage and that was $418. I don't know what that's about exactly but went ahead and included that as income. From the list of their expenses, they put notes next to everything and anywhere that it said that they pull from their sinking fund, I went ahead and popped it in here. So tax sinking fund, they're taking about 132 from that. Car maintenance sinking fund, about 280 per month. Healthcare, about 92 per month. Travel, about 183 per month. 
And if you add everything together, they're working with over $5,700 of income. Now, this isn't 100% accurate because, again, I uh, this wasn't really a budget. This was literally their spending from January through August 2023. So I added each of those numbers up, like whatever categories were together, added them up, took an average, and then paid attention to where they said they were using sinking funds to, to cover things, and that's how I added that into the income. This is simplified into just a few categories. So their mortgage is, is the largest and at the top about $1,400 there. Um, and then of course we are including that mortgage compensation in their income. So it, it equals out, it's like a thousand per month. Utilities came to about 238. This is like their electricity, water. Uh, I think this even includes their phone bill. For the auto category, this one is quite high. This does include gas insurance maintenance as well as tax, but that's why I put the car maintenance sinking fund because it looks like they have a decent amount saved there and they had like a larger expense earlier in the year and pulled from that sinking fund. So that is balanced out a little bit because of pulling from the sinking fund, but uh, 617 per month on average. Groceries, about $406. And I think that's fine. That's what I budget for my groceries. Um, it, food is very expensive. I'm sure it's pretty similar over in the Netherlands. So I think that's fine. Food out average to be about $140. I highlighted this in yellow just because I think that's one area you could probably improve. I noticed also that they put a note saying that sometimes they'll purchase takeout for their friends when they come over. And I think just to be just be careful with that. While it is super friendly of you to do and very generous of you to do, I'm going to assume that your friends can probably afford their own food out. And I don't know, I'm just really weird about like paying for other people. And maybe that's bad of me, but if it's something small, like, oh, I grabbed you a coffee type of thing. But if you're purchasing like a full on meal for a friend, it's not even like a significant other. Um, yeah, you just have to be careful because it can really add up. And sometimes I'm sure you have great friends, but, and this may not apply to you, but it could be for other people, but your friends could take advantage of you and be like, oh, yep, they're paying, I'll, sure, let's do it. And that's, you know, running you up more in food out. Also, if you're finding food out to be costing a lot more than you want it to, look into like potlucks or like, hey, we're all gonna, cook a meal together and that's how we hang out instead of going out to eat or getting takeout. That was one area that I was like, oh, you could probably cut back here, but um, it's okay. It's not horrible, you know? Gifts came to about 20 per month, healthcare about 123, but they're pulling a little bit from their sinking fund for certain things. I think it was like a doctor, like doctor visits or something. Travel about 183 on average per month, but also have some in a sinking fund, so that's accounted for in the income. Household is averaging 112 per month, and this includes a number of things. So electronics, furnishing, home care, personal care, software, and sport. They did put clothing under, under household or home needs, but I moved that down to leisure. Um, so just know that I took that out and put it into leisure, which we're coming up on, but insurance, about 13. Leisure, 277 per month. This is another one that I highlighted because I think you could lower things here. Um, I did put the clothing, the average that you're spending on clothing into here. They also said this includes books, entertainment, hobbies, museum, and subscriptions. So I would just be careful with this one. It looks like they want to, they did mention they want to spend more money like on hobbies and stuff but where you're at is probably good. I know some months are higher than others, but this is what the average came out to, so that is another area where you could probably cut back a little bit, maybe get this down to an average of at least 200 instead of 2 277. Uh, but again, you this is still works out like every based off of your your income and your spending, you should be okay to keep it at that. Next is taxes, 132, but you have that covered by your sinking funds. Transportation, 59 on average. This includes, this is outside of their car. So like bike, public transport, parking, and tolls, taxis, Ubers, etc. And then finally, miscellaneous came to about $21 per month. Altogether, they're spending about $3,745. I know all these numbers are just kind of like random, but um, <laughs> this is why it's important to budget because if you actually 
set a budget and stuck to those, it would make a lot more sense. Um, or it would just be, it's important for you to, to start doing that if you're not already. The difference, if we take the difference of their expenses from their income, they're left with about $1,993. And as always with these videos, I do prefer to be a little bit more conservative. So we'll say instead that you have like 1500 to work with. So let's go ahead and put together your spending based off of an extra 1500 per month to, to allocate towards your goals. Okay, so I did move everything over, all of the expenses over, but this is still using the same income numbers from, from over here, so just keep that in mind, but um, it wouldn't fit otherwise. So one thing I'm going to add on to here is a car maintenance sinking fund. Um, we're also going to say that this is going to be October through through December because I think think things might change after that. So we're gonna still assume the same income no matter what, but let's let's just talk about the next three months. Uh, they said that they want their car maintenance sinking fund to be $1,000, but it's at 400. Um, keep in mind this was sent to me in August, so things have probably changed since then, but we're just going to assume uh, everything is about, actually, um, yeah, we'll, we'll assume it's the same. So they need to save an additional 600 over the next three months, so 200 for October, November, December. They also want their healthcare sinking fund to be 2,500, but they have 2,150 already. So not too much is needed there. Healthcare sinking fund, like 115 over the next, each month over the next three months. So that covers your sinking funds. It looks like for now that kind of covers everything. And then we'll worry about picking those back up in 2024. Now you did mention wanting to save for a car, so we're gonna put just a car sinking fund, and in order to reach the $20,000 there over the next four years, you need to do about 415 per month, I had mentioned that earlier. So, so far we've covered a few goals. We will have enough money in your sinking funds for the next year. Um, like I said, we're not gonna worry about the six month expense emergency fund. You, I don't think you should add to that right now. Just leave it where it's at and then we're just not going to touch it. Saving 20k for a car over the next four years, that's included in here. And then you want to put some money, extra money to your mortgage, investing, and about 6k for home renovations. So, okay, we are going to put investing. I think when it comes to your mortgage, something that you could do since you are being compensated because of the like accident and whole benefits package you have going on, maybe just pop on an additional 400 to your mortgage. I don't think you need to do like any crazy amount, but but putting an extra 400 will help you to obviously lo lower what you owe. It'll save you a little bit in interest and hopefully make you feel a little bit better about your situation. I would probably lower it to like an extra 200 instead of an extra 400, but I think 400 would be a good amount. If you do 400 for 12 months, what is that? An extra 4,800 in the year. So it's not quite the 10,000 extra that you were hoping for 2024, um, but I think that's unnecessary to be honest. One other thing I'm going to add on here the well we will lower this down and we'll put home reno home renovation sinking fund as well uh not something that i think you should prioritize so uh, so from this difference here this 863 that that i'm looking at so we we really want this to just be like get down to 500 because like i said we're being conservative so i would say maybe let's see what 150 looks like okay and then maybe like 250. Okay, I think that that might work. It's a little bit more than I wanted. I wanted the difference to be a bit higher, but this might be okay. So an extra 400 to your mortgage, you will be saving a little bit for your home renovations and then about 250 per month for investing. Um, I, I would argue that instead of the home renovation savings that you should probably put more to investing, but this allows you to go after all of your goals at 
once, which is, is quite a lot, you know? And the thing too that I wanna call out is you don't have to do that. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to just focus on one thing at a time and that is completely okay. Like let's say, I, I think with savings and stuff, if you're saving for sinking funds, if you want to be investing, those things should be happening all the time. Like you should constantly be going after those goals. But like the home renovations, maybe you want to get that to 6K, but you're gonna focus on that in a couple of years and not do that on a month-to-month -month basis. And yeah, that is perfectly okay to do that. That's kind of the stage where I'm at now, where it's like, okay, I've, I have finished maxing out my Roth IRA and stuff like that, but now I'm like focusing on one savings goal at a time. And it's, it's tough to not see everything growing all together, you know, at the same time but also putting your energy all into one thing makes it go much faster. And um, yeah, it just feels really good to be able to completely knock off a goal. Hi y'all. I know for these videos, I like, I never do this for these finance videos, but I'm editing this and I had filmed what this person should do for January, 2024 through December, 2024. And the numbers were not, added up correctly because I didn't pull the numbers in into my spreadsheet right and then the numbers actually didn't even make sense so um, I'm gonna cut that part out and kind of share what this person what I think this person needs to do for 2024 um, looking at these numbers they're just not great overall like if this person has a thousand nine hundred something that rolls over into the next month they technically don't have any like they're living paycheck to paycheck basically uh, but somehow they were able to do that. So I think these numbers are definitely higher than what they're actually spending in, in each category, even though I took an average. But I think what I shared for October through December is okay. And then for 2024, they would need to add back in some of their sinking funds and save for those every month if they want the same thing, like to save in 2024 so they have money for 2025. So they would need to add in like a travel sinking fund, a car maintenance sinking fund, a healthcare sinking fund. And then the whole time, ideally, you would continue to invest every single month. I would say at least like, at least 100 per month, but really it should be higher. That's That's something that should be prioritized and I don't think you need to put extra to your mortgage, but, but you still get that $400 compensation. So if anything, it should be max 400 per month extra that you're putting to your mortgage. Otherwise, I would say just don't worry about that and instead prioritize you know, saving for your sinking funds so you can maintain that and then investing as well. So yeah, I am so sorry that I don't have the spreadsheet for this, but hopefully what I just talked about makes sense. Uh, I think it's best to kind of see how things are looking come January anyway, but yeah, they will have to add in some of those sinking funds, add 100 to each or so, and adjust their numbers accordingly. I feel like this one was a little bit less organized, so I apologize for that, but hopefully this is helpful. I do kind of want to reiterate or just summarize everything I just talked about. So going through your goals... You want to make sure you have enough money in your sinking funds. We did cover that. So you're going to save a little bit in, in those for the next three months. And you should be good for your sinking funds for 2024. But then throughout 2024, you would need to start saving again for each of those so that you have it for the following year and, and the spending throughout 2023. So checkbox on that one. You don't want to spend any money from your emergency fund. So hopefully you, you don't have to. Uh, but if that does get depleted, you'll probably need to add back to that, but we're just not really paying attention to this goal. Save 20,000 for a car that you expect to buy in about four years. Um, I think that is a great goal, something that we all should be working toward once we pay off our car, just because you know at some point you're gonna have to replace it, even if it's years in the future. Uh, so that's gonna be about 415 per month, and then you should be good to go. And then of course, if it if you end up not buying a car until like six, seven years later, you'll just have more money for that. Put some extra money towards your mortgage. You will be doing that. I think because you're being compensated over $400 for your mortgage, just go ahead and count that as like an extra bonus for your mortgage and, and cover it there. I know you said that it's like a complicated thing to explain, so maybe I'm not completely understanding and it's not just that simple, but if you do want to increase what you put towards your mortgage, I think 400 is, is good since you're getting some coverage for that. 
but honestly this isn't something that I think you really need to worry about because um, it, it's just important to ask like how long you plan on living there and uh, does it really need to increase in value those things that I talked about before so um, I think you're okay to not put extra to your mortgage maybe instead you could put that to your investments but if you really would feel more comfortable with that then 200 to 400 per month. Saving and investing for long term, definitely wise. You are 37, you probably should be investing every single month and quite a bit at this point just because now you have a little bit less time than if you were like 20 years old, you know? Um, so I would suggest 250 to 300 per month. Ideally, this would be like 500 per month, but maybe that's something that comes when you actually return back to work and increase your income. Uh, but definitely something you have room for. And then final thing is having about 6K for some home renovation. So I've had you start saving for that this year, um, but something I would say you should deprioritize and maybe worry about in a few years instead of right now. If there's anything small that you could renovate in order to increase the value of your home or make you feel better, um, sure. But I think with based off of all of your other goals, that should be the last one. So yeah, that is it. That's what I recommend for you. Hopefully this was helpful. Any of you watching, especially those of you in the Netherlands, if you happen to be there, um, if you have any feedback or helpful tips for this person and what they should be doing with their finances, then please feel free to comment that down below. Otherwise, thank you so much to this person for sharing all of this information. Thank you to you for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next one.